Hey, hi, hello, here is Rauf, and what I would like to show you here is a few steps tutorial on how to properly update project cars, graphics and visual configuration with few words about optimization, set up correctly field of view, shortly about improving force feedback in game and developers many, so overall how to improve your project cars experience after every update. Before clicking update, let's find folder cars in documents, usually placed on disk C in Windows 7, or there it was called my documents if I remember correctly. Anyway, all quotes, phrases can be found under the vid in description. Now erase two config files, preventing update content from messing with older version. Graphic configs XML or something, never mind, is it DX11 or uh, DX9? and our profile, default, save. No need to worry, game will create new ones, ready to fill in next steps. Now we are ready to hit update. After it will take place, we should reboot computer. Keep in mind, in properties, there is possibility to run game with additional string, mainly with 64 bits and multi-threading. Enter dash x64. Another clever is command skip crowd, which, re which is resource friendly, saving around 3 to 5 fields. By the way, every time having problem with potential application error in Steam, there is an option in local files to verify file's integrity. In beta tab, update interval can be chosen. Be sure to choose correct one according to your grade. Ok, starting we need to sign in again. First of all, let's go to option and help. And set visual to match our monitor resolution. Choose no for vertical synchronization to exclude input lag and limitation of produced frames to refresh rate monitor. Choose yes if you want to get rid of flickering. Rest option I will quickly set in a safe position for let's say i5 CPU and GPU like GTX 660. Main target is to get at least around 60 frames in demanding track like spa or battles with uh, around 10 AIs. Now let's move to gameplay and choose driving model. Now it's time to configure our input device. Choose control and above find proper equipment from gamepads to high-end wheels. In my case it's Fanatec CSR. You always want separate, not combined even if your pedals are plugged into wheelbase. Cause combined means that throttle and brake works on a common axis. That means you can only press one each time, vice versa in separate, where pedals can be pressed at the same time. It's advice for Logitech users to enable option allow game to adjust settings in logitech profiler choose calibrate wheel turn rim with full rotation to one side keep it there and hit next now get back to zero position and turn it just 19 degree in one side keep it and hit finish there is no need to move at left and right with rim just single move is okay calibrate pedals and if any hasn't worked properly Get back to edit and click each of them separately, then just press invisible pedals to bind it with wanted function. Now it can be calibrated. Coming back to edit, bind more function. If any of them are behind other letters, just click them and write doubled key like space or alt here and there. For me works defining in wheel functionality like change camera view and cycle cam view to switch between sets of camera and different views. Reduce and increase view angle to regulate FOV, which is most important. Then cycle hued to obtain access to telemetry and different race infos. Rest is definitely optional due to your preference. Configure. Here we have few important sliders, with wheel mostly recommended are remove all dead zones, sets throttle sensitivity to around 40 and brake sensitivity to max. 
steering sensitivity need to stay on 50, damper could be around 80 or lower. Now recommended force feedback and tire force safely leave it to its stock 100. Don't forget to turn off RPM display blinking in our real wheels. Last but not least is a field of view. Using cockpit view and single monitor should be around 80 to 90 degree. It's quite wide and best way to add some immersion is being in cockpit view, bring forward seat and make some additional positioning. So we have just set graphic settings, calibrated wheel and pedals, bind needed keys, simple set field of view and ensure shared memory is on. Now close game to save our settings in earlier erased profile file. So restart game, pick any car and check if there is option to change stock tire, which are usually less grippy than dedicated or slicks. That's the simple solution to make car easier to control. Last point is to set up force feedback option in developer's menu. Being on track, just press F1 key, navigate with arrows, exit with return. Choose vehicle, force feedback adjust, and set multiplier for force feedback and tire force. For me works something around 1.1 and 0.15. Get back with return key, scroll down to input, choose force mask and disable all of them, except first one. Choose load and force feedback restarted configuration should appear. Ok, now try to drive and watch Hude on left corner as there is no clipping in force feedback graph. That's all for brief instruction, hope it helps you a bit. Next time I will show how to test your wheel in wheel check program, improve force feedback and modify parameters of wheel for each car and maybe some in-depth hints about optimization process letting you gain more frames per second without spending zillion for top-notch GPUs. But that's another time. Thank you and cheers!